Next on the Delaware Way, Wilmington Mayor Mike Brzezicki is here and he's getting fed up with the fighting in city council. He says it's hurting the city. We'll tell you how. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Right now, the city council in Wilmington is at a stalemate. Nothing is getting done. How is that affecting the city? Well, I have somebody that's interested in that. The mayor of Wilmington, Mike Brzezicki. Thank you so much for being here. Let me let me say one thing before we go on to talking about the city council, and that is how much we appreciate you coming on the show as many times as you do. I think it's important for city officials, for elected officials, to be able to speak to the viewers, not to me, but to the viewers and to the people of Wilmington. So you do an excellent job of that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think that a uh, big part of the job is to be present and to be available. And so that's... That's, it's not by accident that I'm here. Is a big part of the job to get things done? I, and I'm, I guess sure. I'm getting to the city council. They seem to be um, wrapped up so much in uh, electing or choosing a new member that nothing else is getting done. Is that fair to say? I think what's happening on council is there is a group of, on, of members of council who don't want to see a majority that would be in any way sympathetic to the administration's view of the world. And so they're fighting to get someone they believe that they who will be more sympathetic to their view. And that's just created this uh, intractable situation right now. And I'm hoping f I'm hoping that a log jam will break of its uh, in due course simply because it's very difficult to be in that position. Just ask Congress when they decided to shut shut the government down. Pressure builds and people get impatient with this. Uh, nonsense, and so I think for some there are there are two or three who are happy to be in this in this position. There are another two or three who are not very comfortable there, and I don't think they're going to sustain it. Let's back up and just catch the viewers up for a second. Sure. There was a city council member who went on to become a state legislator that created an opening. There was talk about having a special election, but the, under the city charter, I guess, or under the city constitution, that's not allowed. It's supposed to be a five-person panel that selects. Correct. A person was selected. That person was not approved by the city council because they thought they would be too much on your side. Is what at least what I read. I think that was the. I think that was the premise. You know, I don't. I don't have any reason to believe that this individual is just going to roll over for the administration any more than his brother did. And it was, in fact, his, uh, the nominee Chuck Walsh's brother, who was Al Mills, who was uh, selected by the committee. But there seems to be some feeling that uh, he's not controllable and therefore they can't support him. So and now the, the stalemate seems to be over the process, not a person, but the process on how you select the person. No, I disagree. I, think, I mean, that becomes, a, that becomes a proxy for the same result. The result is they want their person. Uh, I had members of council come into my office and tell me, either we get our person or you're not going to get anything done. And I said, well, getting anything, I mean, don't make it, it's not, it's not like it's a personal affront to me. It's a it's a problem for the city government, the city, not Mike Przicki. I mean, sure, I want to get things done, but it's not for my benefit. It's for the city's benefit. Is it fair to say you want your person and they want their person? Oh, so no. there is responsibility on both sides? Absolutely not. We want somebody who is capable and even handed, period. I have no I have absolutely no uh, no favorite in this. In you this you don't have in your mind. I'd really like this person to be in there. I do, but I, I haven't conveyed that to anybody. We are not in this debate at all. This is a city council matter. We, we have nothing to do with this discussion other than we want to see a quality person in that And role. your name keeps coming up every time well, we talk about well, the stalemate. I, yeah, sure. It's uh, because I think that there are people on that council who want to say that the mayor can't have unfettered uh, control of the, of the city. I would argue, why is that a bad thing? Tell me about what are the things that I did that you object to, but they don't, they personalize it. And so, uh, you know, I, I can tell you unequivocally that we just, there are no, any number of people we would be very happy with, just people with high quality, high, good credentials, and people we think that would, would uh, be even-handed in uh, representing uh, that district. So let's talk about how this affects the city, the stalemate in city council. What is not getting done that you'd like to get done? I think the most important thing for us uh, today is we've tried to advance legislation over the past two years now that has been, we've characterized as blight legislation. We have, we have blighted properties in the city, far too many. We have uh, 1,500 vacants in the city. We have half of the units in the city are, are rental units. 
We have far too many landlords who are not responsible, who don't keep their places up, and we have people living in virtual squalor, and we want the tools to be able to manage this situation. On the other side of the argument, people say you're trying to gentrify the city, you're going to kick out little old ladies and bring in middle class people, which is absolutely farcical on its face. There's been no indication we've done that in any one instance, not one instance. But yet that's the, that's the battle lines are drawn over this issue of how this gets, uh, how this ordinance gets abused. Our point of view is you have people you have people that presumably you're trying to represent who are living in third world conditions. We want to fix that. Their view is you're going to kick these people out. They're not going to have any way to go. And your secret plan is to gentrify the city. And talk it's about really an absurdity. Specifically what what this bill would do, what the legislation would do is, it, and, and from what I understand, it takes it out of the civil court and puts it in a criminal court? Uh, the other way around, it takes it out of criminal court. Puts it in the civil and court. Puts it in the civil court. And in civil court, it allows us to impose fines on the property itself and then take the property uh, more quickly to sheriff sale if in fact they don't keep their property You think up. it would have more bite in the criminal court? Exactly. I said, I always tell people, imagine if we were going from a civil system and say, we want to criminalize this now, what the hue and cry would be. But we're actually doing the opposite. It's just that it's a, it's a more expedient way to get into court and to be able to get fines placed on these irresponsible landlords and then get get to sheriff sale if necessary. There's another part of all this, and that's the housing partnership, which is now in some trouble. I, I want to let you hold that thought for a second, sure. because we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the problems with the housing partnership. When we continue our conversation with the mayor of Wilmington, Mike Brzezicki, right after this.